If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, gather round. Are you ready to sing, Rainbow? All right, take it away. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, please sit down. Wow, Rainbow, that was really long. <laughs> All right, are you ready for a story? Okay. <laughs> We have a seat over here. You can see Miss Kim. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Is it sunny out there today? A little chilly. It was cold yesterday. Did you see the snow flurries? Well, if we were doing our story time that we did last year, we were focused on all the weather. We would have said how cold it was and talked about it being spring. And that's spring in PA. You can have sun, rain wind, snow, you name it, in Pennsylvania, you can have all sorts of weather in springtime. Today we have sun and cold. All right. Well, the letter V today, we are almost done with the alphabet. Do you know that? Almost done. We only have V. Do you know what's next? U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Four more story times after today, which will take us up to almost the end of May. And then we'll have a little break and then we'll be having their summer reading program. So be sure to come back for that, okay? <laughs> All right, let's say, shake some sillies out. Let's see, V. We could shake some very sillies out. You wanna try that? We're gonna shake. Shake, shake some very silly space. Shake, shake some very silly. Shake, shake, shake some very silly. Shake some very sillies out. <laughs> We're gonna shake, shake, shake some very silly. Shake, shake, shake some very silly. Shake, shake, shake some very silly. Shake some very sillies out. <laughs> I switched it up on you, didn't I? Yep. We didn't wiggle our waggles. We just, that's gonna be great for next week, isn't it? <laughs> wiggle our waggles away. Okay, the letter V. Mm, so many words. Not as many as S and T. It's more than, but more, more than poor little you last week. Okay. Well, what does V sound like? First of all, V is a fun one to say. You put your teeth right in the edge of your lip and kind of blow out and feel it vibrate on your lip. Can you feel that? <laughs> v, v, v. It's fun to say. <laughs> it kind of tickles your lip. <laughs> All right, so V sounds like V and that's pretty much what it always says. Okay? It doesn't change like some letters do. So let's do our names. Girl names. Violet, that was my mom's, actually my mom's funny story. My mom's real name was Violet. They never called her Violet. They always called her Ellen. And it wasn't until she was an adult and got married that she learned when she saw her birth certificate that her name was Violet. By then she'd gone by Ellen, so she went and had her name changed to Ellen Violet instead of Violet Ellen. <laughs> but I like the name Violet. I've always liked that. Victoria, Valerie, Vanessa, Vivian. Some V boy names. Vincent, one of my favorite actors, Vincent Price. Victor, Vance. That can also be a last name. Went to school some children whose last name was Vance. Valentino or Valentine. And Van, which is short for many of the VAN names. Let's look at foods. Mm, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Vanilla. 
I don't usually eat vanilla by itself, but the flavor is in so many things. Almost all cookies, cakes have some vanilla in them. And of course, vanilla ice cream. Venison, you're like, what's that? That's actually like beef is, it, is um, cow and chicken, of course, is chicken, pork is pig. Venison is deer meat. Um, and in this area, deer hunting is a big thing. So if, you're, if your dad goes out and hunts deer and you eat that, that is venison. Velveeta cheese, a very specific kind of cheese, Velveeta. And how could we forget vegetables? <laughs> very general term for lots of different kinds of foods, but or items, but vegetables. Some words, just general things that begin with a V. A van, we're going to have a story about a van today. I did not think I would find a story about a van, but I did. <laughs> Vase, where you might put some pretty flowers. The word very, we use that to describe things. Very silly. Vine, lots of vegetables grow on vines. Violin, our other story that we're reading today is about a violin, which is an instrument, a string instrument played with a bow. Volcano. Our game today is about a volcano. Valentine's, we give it on Valentine's Day. And our vacuum to clean up our house. Animals. That was a little more tricky, but we have vampire bats. <laughs> and vultures. And today, our animal, or our letter, is going to be a vulture. That's who's peeking out there when you're seeing that. Vultures and voles, which uh, if you know what a mole is, a vole is very similar. They almost look the same. If you don't know the differences, it's actually hard to tell whether you've seen a vole or a mole. So little tiny animals dig under the ground. <laughs> aerating the soil, whether you want them to or not. All right, so we're shaking our sillies out. We've talked about the letter V and learned lots of different words. Let's see what books we have. Of course, I had many to choose from and I um, had to just pick two. So here are the others that you might request from other libraries or find here at ours. The Big Tan Van. And this actually is a pretty fun story. It's just a little too long, but you get sort of a, a rhyming, almost like a poem. It's telling a story and then a big bold line, the sun will make it run. All sorts of, this just is a really cute book. And this is ours. So you can get that here at our library. Vegetables. Here's a book about vegetables, growing vegetable soup. Now, you know, you can't grow vegetable soup. We can't grow soup, but we can grow all the vegetables that go in the soup. And this, again, is, I'm sure this is ours. Well, this is Muncie, but I think we have a copy of it. I think ours just might be out. But this is from Muncie. Tiny green thumbs, again, about growing vegetables. And this is not ours. Hughesville Library sent that to us. Mole music. That's not these, right? Nope. But this mole, he plays the violin. I almost read this one. I've read this one before, so I thought I'd read the one that we're going to read today because I've never read that one out loud before. But this is ours, and you can get this at our library. The Mystery Vine. This is a double duty book. This is a book about vegetables that grow on vines. <laughs> It's about a pumpkin vine, actually. But um, so we have vines and vegetables in this book. And this book comes to us from James V. Brown, the Williamsport Library. Now, today, we are going to read Noisy Nora. Again, no bees there, but she's learning to play the violin. And on a fun take on this old man, he played one, he played knickknack on his thumb. We have this old band. <laughs> I'll see if I can sing it when we read it or not. We'll see. <laughs> Sometimes the ones where we change the words around to a song to make it um, fit what we want to don't flow 
too well for singing, but it was a very cute um, book. And I think you'll like that. That's our second book. We're going to read Noisy Nora first. Take a sip of water. Let's see. Noisy Nora. You Can Do It. Actually, the title of this book is You Can Do It, Noisy Nora. First page. Let me turn around here a little bit so that I can see and read and show you the pictures. Here's our very first picture. I'm going to try and show you the words because you won't be able to read them anyways. From a neighbor's window on a night in June... Oh, look at their nice backyard. Nora heard a violin playing Claire de Lune. The music floated like a cloud, dreamy, soft, and true. Nora wished with all her heart that she could play too. So here's Nora, and here's her neighbor who's playing the piece of music, Claire de Lune. <clears throat> My goodness, okay, we're not going to start this, are we? <clears throat> Let's hope that helps. It's going to be a long story time. Another big double picture. Looks like they've gone to a music store. Let's see. How about, let me bring this a page. I feel like we did. No? I guess we missed, they didn't tell us about where Nora tells her parents that she wants to play an instrument. How about a xylophone, said father with a smile. Or the banjo, mama added. You could, sh would surely be worthwhile. This picture. Anything, yelled sister Kate, except a screeching violin. But Nora wanted what she wanted, and she dug her heels in. That means that she wasn't going to argue. She wanted what she wanted. She wanted a violin. Okay. These pages do not want to turn. <laughs> I believe this would be her violin teacher, maybe. Mrs. Yamamoto brought the violin. There is much to learn and practice before we can begin. My daughter actually, my daughter Sam actually taught herself to play the violin. She wanted to learn. She already knew how to play the flute. She decided she wanted to learn how to play the violin. <laughs> so she did pretty good for teaching herself. First things first, she said, here's the way we hold the bow. Standing firmly on both legs, press the strings just so. Twinkle, twinkle, little star will be our starter tune, said Mrs. Yamamoto. You'll learn it very soon. This is a week of Nora practicing. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Twang, whine, scrape, screech, screech, pluck, shriek, <laughs> was Nora's music for a week. Twinkle, twinkle, little star came squeaking through the breeze. Nora yelled, Sister Kate, close your door. Please. <laughs> Practice hours felt like years. Everybody held their ears. Awful squeaked the cockatoo. Jack woke up and cried. That's her baby brother. Bravo, said her mama. But let's play again. 
outside. <laughs> Swinging like a buzzsaw, scratching like a hen, with father the conductor, for conductor, Nora tried again. Kate put on her earmuffs. Jack began to howl. The cockatoo was covered with a heavy bathroom towel. See the calendar here, so they're marking off days for something. September 1st was going to be a very special day. Nora had a brand new song she wanted to play. Counting down the days, here's August, there's September 1st. That's a whole month. You can do it, said her teacher, and in a monumental burst, Nora learned it perfectly on August 31st. That's the day before September 1st. <laughs> Page to turn. Oh, she doesn't look like she's preparing for a concert. She looks like she's baking something. Let's see. A special, the special evening had come at last. Not a sound was heard. No tra-la-la from Jack, no comments from the bird. Safely underneath her chin, Nora tucked her violin. There's their backyard. Happy birthday, Mama! Across the yard it rang. Every note played true and strong, and everybody sang. Oh, that's the song she learned. It was happy birthday for her Mama. Bet it was felt especially special that year since her mom encouraged her to play the violin, the thing that she wanted to do. That's lovely. <laughs> Let's see what we have next. Okay. Now, our song action thing we're going to do today, we did a couple weeks ago when we did the tree, our letter T for tree. We did three chartreuse buzzards. We're going to change it a little bit and we're going to do three sharp-toothed vultures. Okay, everything else is the same. We're going to do three sharp-toothed vultures. Can you do that? Three sharp-toothed vultures <laughs> sitting in a dead tree. Don't forget our tree. <laughs> One has flown a way. What a shame. <laughs> Two, sure. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? Okay. Three sharp tooth vultures. Three sharp tooth vultures. Three sharp tooth vultures. Sitting in a dead tree. One has flown a way. Oh, what a shame. Two sharp tooth buzzards. Two sharp tooth buzzards. Oh, I said buzzard vultures. <laughs> Two sharp tooth vultures sitting in a dead tree. One has flown a way. What a shame. One 
a sharp tooth vulture. One sharp tooth vulture. One sharp tooth, sharp tooth vulture sitting in a dead tree. One has flown away. What a shame. One sharp tooth vulture. One sharp tooth vulture. No sharp tooth vultures. No sharp tooth vultures. No sharp tooth vultures sitting in a dead tree. Oh, look, one has returned. Let us rejoice. One sharp tooth vulture. One sharp tooth vulture. One sharp tooth vulture sitting in a dead tree. Let us rejoice. Two sharp tooth vultures. Two sharp tooth vultures. Two sharp tooth vultures sitting in a dead tree. One has returned. Let us rejoice. Three sharp tooth vultures. Three sharp tooth vultures. Three sharp tooth vultures sitting in a dead tree. One has returned. Let us rejoice. There are three sharp tooth vultures sitting in a dead tree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the other week when we did three chartreuse buzzards, I chartreuse, which is a color of green, felt very, very wrong to me. I couldn't figure out why. And when I thought to do this song today, it suddenly popped into my head. The way I had learned it was not chartreuse. It was three sharp tooth vulture or buzzards. So I was happy to do it the way I learned it <laughs> from my daughter when she was in Girl Scouts. Okay, next book. This old man. We'll see if it sings. Well, if it doesn't sing, it'll be sing songy, that's for sure. I'm going to try and read. This is a letter to this grandma. Okay. Some of it's covered up, so it's kind of hard to read, but it says, Dear, Gra Dear Grams. Well, that's not Grams, that's Grandma. Oh, Grams and Granny, I'm going to be something. Please come and don't be late. You'll miss it. Love, Jake. So they've been invited to something. We don't know what. This old van, she passed one, shining in the rising sun with a click, clack, rattle, rack, ready for some fun. This old van says goodbye one. Here's a picture. Passed one train. And there fun van. Did you get a good look at the van? Here's a picture. Here's a little bit better picture of our fun van. Okay. okay, big picture here to see. Looks like a construction site. It says, this old van, she passed two friendly flaggers, wave her through with a click clack rattle rack, tooting out the crew. This old van says goodbye to, and there are two big pieces of heavy equipment. This looks like some farmers. Big picture. This old van, she passed three, plowing round a tulip tree with a click clack rattle rack. Baggage flying free. This old van said goodbye three, and there are one, two, three tractors. Okay. It's really 
completely two different pictures of some big tractor trailer trucks like we see on the highway. Yep. This old band she passed for, roaring towards the grocery store with a click clack rattle rack. Pedal to the floor, this old band says goodbye for. And there are one, two, three, four trucks. <laughs> Some racing cars on this page. It says Vintage Car Parade today. This old van, she passed by, zigging up a zaggy drive with a rick, rick, with a click, clack, rattle rack. When she'll, when, when she'll, I can't say it. <laughs> with a click, clack, rattle rack, when she'll, will she arrive? This old van said goodbye, five. And there are one, two, three, four, five old vintage cars. And there's our van way over here, passing them all. <laughs> Let's see what do we have here. Dump trucks. Dump trucks. This old van, she passed six, hauling half a million bricks. Wow, that's a lot. With a click clack rattle rack, splitting, spitting oily slicks. This old van said goodbye six. One, two, three, four, five. Where's six? Oh, six. <laughs> I missed him. Ooh. When I was reading this through the first one, I thought, oh, is this the end already? Looked like a good place to go. Looks like it says hot fudge heaven. Looks like a nice place to get some ice cream. This old van, she passed seven honking horns at hot fudge heaven with a click clack rattle rack flat on Route 11, flat on Route 11, this old van said goodbye seven. And yep, here they are fixing a flat, but they're passing them all anyways. One, two, let's try over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Ooh, big car carrier. Can you guess how many cars there are? We just had sevens. So this is probably, yep, you guessed it, eight. This old van, she passed eight, riding high on sh as shiny freight with a click clack rattle rack. Now she's running late. This old van says goodbye, eight. <laughs> and there she is. And there's our eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look at all those school buses. And how many? That's right, nine. This old van, she passed nine just before the county line with a good clack rattle rack. Glad to see them sign. This old van says goodbye, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, and the sign here says, welcome to Vroom County. <laughs> that was nine. This is, that's right, ten. It's like ten motorbikes. This old van, she passed ten, dodging dirt dodds now and then. With a quick clack rattle rack, wipers on again. This old van says goodbye, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. <laughs> that was ten. This is, yep, eleven. It's not eleven. This is the end of the book. This old van, caked in grime, picks up speed for one last climb. With a click clack rattle rack proudly in her prime, this old van is. It's what? It'll be the page that doesn't want to turn. <laughs> this old van is just in time for the All State Youth Championships Downhill Derby. Looks like a derby race. Is there? Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just in time to see their grandchild run in the race. And I think his name was Jake. Yep. 
So, wonder if you want to look at the doggy. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I never expected to find such a fun book about <laughs> a van <laughs> to read to you guys this morning. That was really fun. And it worked out pretty well to sing it too. So, <laughs> Sorry. All right. So where are we at? <gasps> Almost time for a vulture, but we have a game. Remember I said the game was about volcanoes. We've actually call this game, and this is not a timer game. This is just a fun, silly game. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else, and then I remembered the floor is lava. If you haven't played it, ask your mom and dad. I bet they have. Maybe your big sister, big brother, cousins. The floor is lava is great for when you're bored. <laughs> um, if you're pretty little, you might need to put some pillows on the floor to step on because you can't step on the floor because it's hot lava and it will burn you. <laughs> so you can only touch things that are on the floor, but you can't touch the floor. It's fun to pretend when you're sitting on the couch watching a movie, the floor is lava, you can't get up, you have to stay and watch the movie. Or if you need to go to the kitchen or the bathroom, you got to get some pillows or some things that you can put on the floor and step on. Make sure there are things that's okay to step on. Um, I've even played this with my Girl Scouts when we were on a Girl Scout trip when they were in like 10th and 11th grade. We were watching a disaster movie about an earthquake and we decided to play <laughs> The Floor is Lava. <laughs> so we put things around the room so if we had to get up and go, get snacks or whatever we could get there but we couldn't touch the floor because the floor was lava and, and that is how our the game is played because of course lava comes out of volcanoes so have fun with that make sure your parents know what you're doing think you're not just jumping on furniture for no reason at all and be careful but ask them i bet they've played the floor is lava okay <laughs> All right, we are ready to do our vulture. Let's look at him again. Okay. That's a little head. Vultures don't have feathers on their head. I should have got a picture of a real vulture. I'm sorry. You guys can look that up to um, confirm, but they, yeah, they have kind of a bald looking head. It's hard to tell. Sometimes when I'm looking at this, the colors aren't real distinct. So I don't know what you're seeing, but I've done purple, black. So they have very dark black brown wings. We've got orange for feet. This is white. They have like this weird, they have weird longish feathers around their neck, but none on their head. And I've used pink because it's very flesh colored looking. And it's a circle and there's like a little, almost like a triangle with the top cut off it here to make a neck. And orange for a beak. And I've used a googly eye because googly eyes are fun. But you guys know how to make an eye if you don't have googly eyes by now, right? Okay. I'm going to put you up here so I can grab you quickly if I need you. Oh, this was supposed to be. No. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to sit it down there. <laughs> All right. So, purple or whatever color you want. Warp surface here. Okay, here's my work surface. You need a big piece of paper, whatever color you want. Let me get it taped down. This is the tape. Right. We're going to run it top to bottom, or skinny, skinny side. Oh. Okay. I was just looking up at my wall where I have all of our art from past weeks. It's pretty fun to see all of them together. Have you guys put yours all together in one place to make an alphabet? You could put them around the top of your room. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. 
I'm missing my A, B, and C for some reason. I don't know why I don't have them back here. I'm just looking at our fun umbrella bird from last week. He's pretty cool, huh? Just forgot to turn it so that you guys can see. I think I need to pull it my way a little bit. Try not to bang into it. Every week I seem to have an issue figuring out where to put this. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna take it a little bit more. Bring it a little bit more. I think we're ready to go. Oh, I can't access my paper though. <laughs> okay, let's move those. Okay. So I started with black. Mm. That was weird. What is it doing now? <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. This is making it look so weird. Right here. Now it's stopped. No? It's still blowing out. Well, hopefully you guys can see. I don't know what is causing it to do that. Turn it a little bit. I turn it too much. Well, on with the show. <laughs> I could have used my paper from yesterday, but I made a bad cut, and so I don't have the, the right size to use. Okay. Long ways. Cut from top to bottom. Add a knife this width, because this is going to be our V. Okay. And then we're going to cut it in half. Okay, but first do that. Make it as wide as you want. Don't get too crazy. Don't get too skinny. Don't get too fat. And, you know, as straight as you can. Fold it. Press it so you know where to cut. Cut it. The, what we're going to do is we're going to glue it into the v-shape that we want you can do tight you can do open just be careful if you do it too open because we've got his wings to stick out and i forgot about that so mine just fit on the page so maybe a little tighter v might be better but you can do whatever you want to what we're going to do though is we are going to do that first I cut it first and then I had to line it back up again. So we glue it first. Then when we cut the bottom off to look nice, we won't have to fix it. We're going to put glue just in like this spot, like right here. Okay. On one of them. Well, you can actually do it on both of them. Same spot. I always forget you can't see down there. Let's put those scissors. Okay. And stick your two glue spots together. Make sure that they line up, you know, pretty pretty even. Doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, that's right. I was gonna make mine try this one a little bit narrower. Also have had problems right now have a little bit of space for his his head. So once you have it like that, take your scissors and see how those pieces are sticking out there. So I kind of cut that straight across, straight as you can get. If it's a little, see mine's a little bit angled, but. Okay, our letter V. Make sure you don't cut off all your glue. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> okay, that's garbage, don't need that. Okay, so we're gonna put them like this. Or like this, doesn't matter, okay? So. How close did I get to what I did here? Oh, well, I made it a little bit narrower. I was just curious. Okay. We're going to... Oh, I just need a place for those scissors. <laughs> I don't want to put them on this because it's so noisy. Okay. Glue your V's down. If you... Or your V down. Not V's. There's only one V. <laughs> the leg or the arms of your V. If you want to leave a little bit of uh, unglued spot near the edge, the outside edge of your V. I tucked the wings underneath that 
making it look a little bit nicer, but you can pop, if you can't get under, you can always put them on top. It doesn't really make any difference. Right in the middle of our paper. Yep, left a little bit of space. Put our vulture wings in there. Okay. For the vulture wings, I'm going to use my old piece of paper um, just because I want to use that one up. But if you're using this one, maybe I already lost my scissors. <laughs> Okay, pretty much for these wings, I cut a rectangle, and those are tricky wings. I admit it, there is just nothing for it, but I, I cut them. I don't really cut this so that I can't get weighted out. And I cut the whole thing. I didn't really need it. It was just easier. To cut like a big piece like that, okay? And then fold it in half. And then I said, that wing is way too big, okay? This part's good, this way too long. So the open end, not the part that's folded, I trim that off. No. Out like that because you don't want your wing too long okay and I had to cut off the open end because that helps this stay together and we can make one cut we don't have to cut two different wings okay it doesn't matter which side you start from I don't think I'm starting from the open end and this is going to be the top of my bird wing it's going to be this point right here. We'll just do a little dip and around. You can do whatever you like. You can make them just ovals, whatever. If you've got a big person helping with you, that's fine too. But it kind of looks like that. And then I left, I left a pretty good wide spot here. And now I'm going around, and I'm going back up to that point. Okay. You should have some junk paper, which I'll just drop on the floor. And then, like, just cut right where that fold was. Two wings. Remember when you put your glue on. One's got to go one way, one has to go the other way. <laughs> if you get the glue on the wrong side, you'll have to you'll have to turn it over and glue it or make a new one. Um, and your your wing will be a little sticky. <laughs> um, you don't have to glue all the way out to the end and leave them loose. I forgot and glued that one more than I wanted to. I kind of go down here and add a little angle. Now when I do this other one, maybe you want to like, okay, it goes here. Turn it over, put the glue on the back. <laughs> and I said, you don't have to put it all the way out at the end. You can leave it loose so they look a little more wing-like. And tuck that one under, or on no, top, wherever you're. There you go. There's his wings. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our orange or whatever color you're using for his feet. In just a mess. Okay. This big piece of orange. And I made two squares. Two little squares. All right. Before I even got to tell you. Trimmed them just a little bit to make them kind of like part of a triangle piece. And then just snipping up 
it doesn't have to be perfect and with a you don't have to cut them all the way and just pull that little piece out one claw okay and put him somewhere where i don't lose him you can do the same thing to this one trim it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a triangle part oh, i'm gonna have to clean up my floor keep flying all over okay and then in the wide end snip 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 and they don't have to be perfect I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here instead of trying to glue my on here. And I'm just going to cover it up with my Ultra D. See? All right. Boy. There it is. Oh, good. It didn't get all dirty. Don't hide your orange because we're going to use it some more. Next, you want the white. We're going to do that white, puffy, cloudy looking thing, okay? See? So you just need like kind of a rectangle shape. If you end up with it too big, you can just make it smaller. They're both too small. I'll have to start over. <laughs> Let's start with that. And how we've done clouds before, just kind of this round, wiggly cutting. You get this wonky thing. It's not as perfect. It doesn't have to be anything great. And we're going to do that sort of, and I don't like Put it straight on there, put it like a little bit of an angle so his head comes out that way. And you might want to leave a little bit of the top not glued in because I think I, yeah, I'm looking at, I tucked his neck down inside this instead of gluing it over it. But if you have to, you can put it right over it too. I just liked it better that this way. So, there's that. And now we're done with the white. So you can put that away. And the pink. Now this is a little tricky because we have obviously a circle for his head and then this funny little piece. So we're going to do the funny little piece first, okay? And it's just a little, I'm going to cut a little rectangle. Not too big. Remember, you've got to go here. So, so rectangle. Okay. Well, that looks more like a square. I guess that's a square. And then I made it triangularly shaped like we did with our feet, okay? And then I just put it like that, okay? Really, you don't see much of it at all, but if I tried it without it, and he just looked really funny with just his head stuck on the white. So. I do want to glue it, so. And that you can glue completely down because Stefford's going over that, okay? But you put the fat end, the wide end in, okay? There we go. Don't push it down so far that it's not sticking out. It's better to cover the bottom and then we're gonna cover the top with our crazy looking head. So, you want to cut a square and using our best skills or our parents or our big brothers and sisters and you can do i'll show you you can cut the corners off and use that if you want to that's perfectly fine and actually i think that might be a little round i guess that's about the size i want and see how we're covering up that little bit yep just leave a little bit of neck out but i'm going to trim mine up more I'm going to make it more roundy round. So if you have somebody to help you to make it round, that's great. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If I looked at my, my one I already did, his head's a little wobbly and wonky, but vultures do kind of have, you know, I don't know, 
it's not all nice and smooth, so it's not outside the range of normal. All right. Is that about the size I did? Yep. Ooh, that was good eyeballing it. And then glue that right down. You can go out to the edges. You don't have to, but you can go out to the edges with this. You're not going to glue anything underneath it. Because his beak is going to go over top of it. There we go. We're almost there. Okay. It's time for the orange again, or whatever color you're using for, want to use for his beak. And that literally is a little square. Square. Maybe more like a rectangle. Because this beak is not square in length. It's rectangly. Did I do that? I did. I think I did his bottom part of his beak. A little bit of curve at the bottom. So you get that little bit of an angle. And then way up here at the top, because he has a big beak, you start curving it down towards. Okay. Glue all of it. I just glued the wrong side. I glued the wrong side. This skin is going to quickly make another one. That's what happens <laughs> when you glue the wrong side. It won't work. So let me get another one. Glue the right side this time. Okay. All right. I'm gonna make sure I'm gluing the right side. You guys waiting for me? I've only got one last thing to do. You know what it is. You can go ahead and do it if you want. Kind of goes over his, on his face. Don't put it under. And our little tiny googly eye. And he'll be done. There we go. There's our vulture, Mr. Vulture, sitting in a dead tree. So I'll show you this one again because that one's taped down, but it should look something like that. Wasn't that fun? I I was looking and looking. I thought, oh gosh, what can I make for the letter V? I wasn't even thinking about vultures because I hadn't had a book on them or anything. And then I saw this craft and I was like, Serena was like, Miss Serena was like, oh, are you going to make that? And I said, oh, I think I am. <laughs> All right, well, it is time for us to say goodbye, and you know what that means. It's time for some crocodiles and alligators. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, let's, let's try it back here a little bit so that you can still see our nice little pressure guy here. Okay. <laughs> see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. You be a sweet parakeet. <laughs> Give a hug, ladybug. See you real soon, raccoon. Out the door, dinosaur. <laughs> you take care, polar bear. And blow a kiss, goldfish. <sighs> Don't forget, today, if you're listening today, we're doing our book sale downstairs till 4 o'clock. And next week will be our last one in April. We may or may not be having book sales in May. So, um, because we're hoping, now that we have the money, to get our roof fixed. So, we're going to be a lot of trucks and things parked in our parking lot and the possibility of nails. So, we might not be having any in, in May. But just a reminder, and we've got tons of children's books and adult books, all sorts of fun books. So, come by the library. If you're hearing this late, make sure you come next Thursday, okay? All right. Well, it is truly time to say goodbye. So are you guys ready to sing? I hope you guys have been singing this with me and learning this song, right? So long, farewell, 
Our feet are saying goodbye. We'd like to stay, but we must say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next week.